Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture, joined by Angela Brackenreed, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. And Angela, you have a focus on uh, on harvest when it comes to canola. That means we get to have a fun conversation now about snow and rain, all this uh, unfortunate weather, these circumstances we've seen across uh, well parts of all three prairie provinces. What does this mean for the canola crop that is still in the field? Well, I think in the short term, Calvin, I think there's maybe a bit of a silver lining that we don't expect to see much for quality loss at all um, if we can still get this crop off this fall. So what will it take to, to do that though? Get the what crop off? What will it take to, <laughs> to get it off? Well, um, I think what we have to hope and assume is that we will see a return to more seasonal like weather and I think that's what everyone's kind of crossing their fingers for and, and I think uh, from what I've heard in a lot of areas it might mean that we need the, the fields to dry out because practically I think um, that's the biggest hindrance right now is actually being able to cross the field even you know if everything else works out is can we actually can we actually get across that field so first of all now waiting to see whether this snow melts and if it does melt yeah waiting for it to dry then it's just like any other rain or yeah harvest. then it's then i think we treat this uh this snowfall like a precipitation event then we're just waiting for that crop to come down in moisture and and be ready to to harvest okay what if the snow is here to stay uh there's some creative or clever um, pictures going around on Twitter with blow dryers attached to the the header I think maybe on Photoshop or <laughs> Microsoft Paint but it, beyond that uh, what are the options can we uh, can we combine canola in snow yeah you know what Kevin it has happened before and and I should say we don't have um, a pile of great information on this it's a lot of anecdotes and just talking to folks who have unfortunately been in this situation before but but it's doable if if the right conditions kind of uh, allow for it. So I think first and foremost is getting past that practical hindrance of can you actually get across the field and, and sometimes unfortunately when we get the snowfall early it can insulate the ground and, and not allow things to firm up and, and freeze. So that needs to be the first thing that happens is the ground needs to freeze well so it'll hold our equipment. Um, second with winter combining is uh, the snow is kind of the, the biggest issue uh, that the snow that's entering entering the combine and um, if you can just imagine the heat that's generated inside that machine it will melt the snow uh, which ca can cause sieves to ice up um, obviously create a fairly wet um, gunky kind of mess in the grain tank which clearly is not something that's acceptable um, so I think the goal um, if we can say what would be ideal for for winter combining would be limited amount of snow and cold conditions so um, I guess really we want that snow to just blow out the back of the combine with our chaff and straw so it needs to be sufficiently cold for that to happen. What do these conditions do to uh, the pods and, and the integrity of the, the plant in terms of loss of, in increasing shatter losses? Yeah you know I think um, we could be seeing some yield losses as we're waiting to, to get out in the field just with the weight of that snow. Um, once we can get out there though, I, I, I don't know that it's plays that big of a role, Calvin, because it, like I said, it's kind of can be seen as any normal precipitation event at this point, and that crop is mature. Okay, so say we have canola that's ripe, maybe ready, we were planning to straight cut it, it's still standing, and we also have some swath. Which one should we uh, take on first if, if we can get into the field? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I've been thinking about this a little bit because like I said, don't have a pile of experience with it, but uh, I think there's some fear of leaving the standing canola throughout the winter. So it may be a good strategy to try and tackle that standing stuff worse as there's some thought that um, that swath canola just might be a little bit more protected from environmental conditions over the winter and, and things like wildlife feeding, etc. So should we be uh, swathing standing canola or should we be trying to straight cut it now? Yeah, so that's another um, scenario that I think. Yeah, kind of for anecdotal sure. And I, I think uh, really for a lot of folks, this is kind of a feeling of helplessness. They're looking out the window, seeing the snow, and thinking, "Okay, what what can I do practically that's going to somehow help this situation?" And that has come up. Um, should I try and swath my standing stuff to protect it over the winter? And uh, I would say that 
first off, there could be practical limitations to even doing that if there's a lot of snow out in the field. And also trying to anchor a, a crop that's mature and fluffy is, is tough. And how do you roll a crop that's that mature? You're going to see a lot of losses in that situation. So I think um, we just have to hope that, that more seasonal weather comes and we can get that crop combined. Um, so that should be goal number one. And, and I, I think I would kind of steer clear from the idea of, of swathing it at this point. That could just create some more losses. What happens if we if areas don't see that better weather before winter sets before winter sets in how late can we combine and, and what happens to the quality of that canola yeah so from from what we have heard anecdotally kelvin um we we shouldn't see quality losses in the short term um yield losses unfortunately may be just a reality um the quality losses will likely be seen next spring um, apparently what happens is we uh, get an increase in, in uh, free fatty acids which, which degrades that oil content. So we can see grade drops because of that. So do we keep trying as we get into December and, and into winter, do we keep trying to get it off or, or when do we make the call to maybe leave it to, to spring? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one too. I think, you know, obviously for every producer, the goal is to get it off, right? Nobody makes a plan to, to be harvesting in the spring. Um, but I think it's, we have to look at the practical side and producers probably understand that better than anyone else, that there just becomes a time that practically it is absolutely not doable to, to get that crop off. So I think if it just continues to snow and that swath is covered or swath or standing crop is covered in a significant amount of snow, then it's kind of game over at that point. And, um, then we just mentally kind of have to accept that okay it's done we we now need to be looking at spring combining this uh, this crop and there are also we haven't touched on it at all but insurance crop insurance implications i guess as well or considerations to be made on the, in that area yeah and i think i would just recommend that every producer kind of deals with their individual insurance uh, company to to discuss those those options all right thanks for your time angela thanks Kelly.